This is chapter number two, that is the data of macroeconomics from the book Macroeconomics by Gregory Menke. Learning objectives. In this chapter, you will learn about gross domestic product, that is GDP, the consumer price index, CPI, and the unemployment rate. First of all, we are going to discuss gross domestic product or GDP. Basically, there are two definitions. First one is total expenditure on domestically produced final goods and services. If we sum up all expenditures on domestically produced goods and services, then we get the gross domestic product or GDP. And the second definition is total income earned by domestically located factors of production. So if we sum up total income earned by factors of production in a country within a particular time period such as one year, then we will get the GDP or gross domestic product. Because of these definitions, economists say that expenditure is equals to income. Why is it so? The expenditure of one becomes the income of another. In every transaction, the buyer's expenditure becomes income of seller. Thus, the sum of all expenditures equal the sum of income. So, Whenever buyer is buying something from the market, he spends money on that. So it becomes the income of seller. In this way, buyer's expenditure becomes income of the seller. So if we sum up the expenditure of all buyers, then it will be equal to the income of all sellers. So because of this reason, we can say that expenditure is equal to income in the economy. Thus, the sum of all expenditure equals the sum of all income in the economy. Uh, now, we'll try to explain this with help of circular flow diagram. Here you go, the circular flow. First of all, we will take the inner side of this diagram, that is the blue uh, lines. We have actually two sides of economy. One is the households and other is firm. Households provide labor to firms, then firms use that labor in production process. Basically, firms use different factors of production and produce goods and services and then provide in the market. So, households provide labor to the firms as labor is one of the factor of production and firms use labor to produce different goods and provide them in the market. Now coming to the outer side, this green line. Households then spend income to buy those goods. Uh, households then spend income to buy those goods and services that will become revenue for the firms. So in this way, expenditure of buyers becomes the revenue for the firms. When revenue is collected by firms, then firms give wages to labor. That becomes the income of laborers or households. So this circle completes in this way that first of all, households provide labor to firms. Firms then produce goods and services. Uh, then households spend money to buy those goods. And that becomes the revenue for the firms. Firms then give wages to laborers 
and that becomes income of the laborers. This is how the economy works. Now comes another concept that is value added. Its definition is Uh, a firm's value added is the value of its output minus the value of the intermediate goods the firm used to produce that output. Uh, actually, this concept is related to the GDP and we call it value added. Basically, value added is the value of firm's output minus the value of the intermediate goods the firms use to produce that output. This concept is explained with help of an example and here it is. A farmer grows a bushel of wheat and sells it to a miller for one dollar and the miller turns the wheat into flour and sells it to a baker for three dollars. So, in the uh, second stage, Miller converts wheat into flour and sells to the baker for $3. At this point, value added is about the final output, that is $3, at which the Miller sold wheat converted into flour to the baker and the intermediate good is the bushel of wheat, which is uh, of dollar a one. If you subtract one from three, so two is the value added because as per definition, value added is the value of firm's output minus the value of intermediate goods the firm used to produce final output. So here the final output is flour that is prepared by Miller and then sold to baker and intermediate product was bushel of wheat which was used to make flour. So in this stage final product is flour which is of dollar three and the intermediate product is bushel uh, bushel of wheat which is of dollar one. So the value added is three minus one equals to two. Now the next step is the baker uses the flour to make a loaf of bread and sells it to an engineer for six dollars. Here the final product is loaf of a bread for dollar six and the intermediate product is flour at dollar three. So by subtracting $3 from $6, the value added becomes $3. That means 6 minus 3. As in this stage, the final product is loaf of a bread that is of $6 and the intermediate product is flour that is of $3. Three. So by subtracting 3 from 6, it becomes three dollars uh, so the value added in this stage is three dollars and then the engineer eats that bread now the question is value compute value added at each stage of production which we have also computed that is the value uh, added at each step. So in the uh, in this stage, the value added is dollar two. That is, the final product in this stage is flour, and the intermediate uh, product is bushel of wheat, which is of dollar one, and the flour is of dollar three. So by subtracting one from three, it becomes dollar two. That is the value added. And then uh, for this stage, the final product is loaf of a bread and the intermediate product is flour. 
that is of dollar three and the loaf of bread is of dollar six so by subtracting three from six it becomes three dollars so uh, for this stage the value added is three dollars and the next question is compute the GDP now what is GDP if you sum up value added at all stages of production you will get the GDP so the price of a bushel of wheat is dollar one in the next stage the value added is dollar two that means three minus one which we have already uh, calculated and in the third stage value added is three dollars that is six minus three equals to three so by summing up the value added output at each step of production you will get the GDP that is one plus two plus three which is six so the GDP is six here Now, uh, this slide is about final goods, value added and GDP. GDP is the value of final goods produced and that is equal to the sum of all value added at all stages of production. So, we can say that the value of the final goods already includes the value of the intermediate goods. So, including intermediate goods in GDP would be double counting. Next slide is about the expenditure components of GDP. In the start of the lecture, we have discussed two definitions of GDP. One of them is if we add all the expenditures of economy then we will get GDP and second definition is all about factors of production that if we add all income earned by factors of production then we will get the GDP of that particular country now we will discuss the expenditure side of GDP the expenditure component of GDP there are four components consumption investment government spendings and net exports and the first component is consumption the definition is the value of all goods and services bought by households or the amount of money households spend on all goods and services is added up then it is known as consumption I am reading it again the definition of consumption is the value of all goods and services bought by households or the amount of money households spend on all goods and services if added up then it is known as consumption it includes durable goods that are last a long time durable goods are basically long-lasting for example cars home appliances such as refrigerators uh, AC and other home appliances It also includes non-durable goods uh, that last a short time, for example, food uh, and clothing. And it also includes services, that is, work done for consumers, for example, dry cleaning, air travel. So, there are three categories in consumption there are three different types on which we spend money. So
so if we sum up the expenditure on durable goods non durable goods and services then we will get consumption or expenditure of the economy that means if we sum up all the categories of consumption that is durable goods non durable goods and services then we will get consumption or expenditure of the economy uh, here is the us consumption data for uh, the year 2001 so total consumption of usa was 7064.5 billions in 2001 and the percentage of GDP was 69.2%. Here consumption is further divided into three categories. That is in durable, non-durable and services. Here the major expenditures are on services. Then on non-durables and then on durables. So... 40% of the total consumption of USA in 2001 was on services that is 4,151.1 billion or 40.7% uh, of the GDP then comes 20.1% uh, of GDP on non-durables that is 2055.1 billion dollars and then 8.4% of GDP was on durables that is 858.3 uh, billion dollars on durable goods so this is all about the consumption of USA in year 2001 in which we have seen that the major expenditures are on services then on non-durables and then on durables